Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Wendy Dillard here. Today is Tuesday, January 30th, 2018, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Your second daily dose of happy for the day. And uh, as we get right to the topic of wins, I can tell you, Wendy, that my big win for the day is that we are actually broadcasting right now, which doesn't sound like a win, <laughs> except it really is because the way this day has gone trying to rebuild this computer to make it work at this point, I wasn't sure it was going to happen, but it is happening. <laughs> well, but that, that is a big win. Yay. It's a huge win. <laughs> And it's working well, better than I would have expected under the circumstances. Um, I won't go into all the details, but suffice to say that the rebuild is ongoing as we do this podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> this computer is very busy right now. <laughs> it should so be you're quite You're multitasking. Your computer's multitasking. Everything. We're yes. all multitasking. <laughs> the, the, welcome to Multitasking Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> But we can't we can't keep everybody suspended because yesterday we had to end the podcast. We were out of time, completely out of time. We had to end it on a cliffhanger, which actually I had one listener say to me, we should probably do that more often. But nevertheless, <laughs> this is not something we normally do, so it's kind of a new thing for us. Um, you were in the middle of telling a story about this experiment, uh, this, this thing that you haven't been able to tell us about that you kind of hint about, but you don't ever tell us about <laughs> That's right. happening, that's going on right now in your life. And you were about to tell us about how you had demanded some proof. So take it away, Wendy. Right. So I'll back up just a little in case somebody's listening and they hadn't heard the cliffhanger part from yesterday, which is I, I kind of made a big decision that I wanted to test my interaction or my co-creation with the law of attraction and work on something deliberate but at the same time, not something I've been working on like before in the same old ways. Because what I kind of recognize is most of the time when I desired something new, it was because there was a need in my life or there was something that was nagging at me. But I went, I just want to create something just for the sake of creating it. And so okay. that's kind of what my new test and my journey has been. And I think it's been going on for about two weeks and over the weekend, I kind of got to the point where I, I was excited that I was getting little hints that things were moving forward, but I was like so ready to jump in and be a part of this creation, and I kind of felt disappointed because I didn't know what to focus on. As a matter of fact, the last time some information had come to me, I was really getting the internal guidance like, don't do anything, just bask in the awareness of the direction it's moving. Well, i got to tell you, sometimes that's fun, and sometimes it's like, but I want to do something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, you know, it wasn't just I wanted to do something, but I realized this thing that I'm wanting to create, it sort of has a nebulous target, if you will, and I know without telling it to you, that really sounds kind of weird. But it's like I have a, tar a monetary target and I have a thing target, and they're, they're connected. Okay. But I don't know what the thing is because <laughs> I put it in kind of a general context. So I don't know what the thing is that's going to produce that new income. And so over the weekend, I just hit the wall where, like, Sunday morning I woke up, and I was just feeling really agitated, like, Arr! And I went, this doesn't work for me because I've heard Abraham say that when you wake up in the morning, your vibration is at its highest level unless you drag something from before into your new day. Uh -huh. So I went, what on, earth, what on earth did I just drag into my new day? Because I swear I just opened my eyes and I felt this. <laughs> so when I dragged it in really fast. <laughs> yeah, apparently. So I realized that what was on my mind was this just this agitation that I don't have a something specific that feels positive hmm. to focus on. So it was about 8 in the morning when I got this, this awareness, and I said, okay, universe, I'm not waking up. It's Sunday morning. I don't have to be anywhere today. I'm not waking up. I'm going back to sleep <laughs> with an expectation <laughs> and a question, which is what can I focus on that will kind of 
relax me into feeling like I get to participate in, in my project. <laughs> so, so basically, you, you did something that a lot of people wish they could do on a regular basis, which is you woke up, the day started badly, and you said, I want to start the whole day all over again. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's one of my favorite things, especially on the weekend. It's like, take a nap. If you don't like the way it started, do it again. <laughs> start it. over. Press the reset button. <laughs> so I did. And as you can kind of tell from my tone of voice, because I was still agitated, it's not like I said to the universe in a nice way, like, hey, if you don't mind, and would you please, <laughs> you know, provide me with some nice little evidence so it'll make me feel good. I was like, no, this is what I expect, okay? <laughs> I <laughs> said no, and I meant now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did fall back asleep, and um, I... And I went, oh, that's new. And so I asked, what does that date mean? And what I felt I received as far as information was, this is the date to connect with this new thing you're wanting to create. And what was interesting is that I had put the date out at the end of June, and I was getting, no, beginning of April. Hmm. And I went, okay. And with that, I felt like excited, like, okay, I got it. I got what I asked for. I can now focus on April 1st. That felt really good to me. And even though I didn't have any more new information, April 1st was sufficient. In other words, it answered what I was asking for. And at that moment, I opened my eyes and I looked at the clock, and it was 11-11. Uh-huh. Now, some people don't think that means anything. I don't know that I put any stock in it, but 11-11 from a new numerology perspective is kind of a magical master number. And so from that perspective, it was, it was kind of like the universe had smiled at me and said, yeah, we gave you what you asked for and it's all good. Okay. <laughs> and I smiled back. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people so, who doesn't really put much stock in numbers, but I have to admit they're fun. So when you get like nice fun. even sequences like that, you're like, oh, that's cool. I, I love it when you know the mileage on the car turns over to you know five zero 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 zero. It's like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> it is cool. So what it did for me all day Sunday, I just kept walking. I mean, as I was doing things, of focus on April first. April first. Oh my gosh, April first is coming quickly. This is really exciting. That means the universe wants to deliver sooner rather than later and i'm totally okay with that now that kind of picks up like that completes the story that i wanted to tell yesterday okay but that also but raises also the question go ahead lead, lead, go ahead it leads into our topic for the day right getting information about the topic for um like on the the Sunday that I got this information, I was getting some more insight, and that's why we're doing this topic because it fits with what happened to me Sunday morning. So do you want to introduce the topic? Well, yeah. I mean, the the topic not only fits the, the carryover from yesterday's show, it fits so many discussions that occur about the law of attraction. I mean, the social media groups, you go on there, and it's all about, you know, well, why didn't this occur? Why did that occur? And I tried to attract this, but that happened instead and so forth. The, the whole thing is wrapped up in the question of is it uh, the actions of a deliberate creation or is it the actions of living by default? Because most people don't realize that the law of attraction is always working. That, that you know the people who right. first hear about it they say, oh great, the law of attraction works any time that I deliberately focus on doing something. So that's when it's going to work, which is true. It's just not the whole picture <laughs> because it's also working the rest of the time. So when you're thinking about that. Uh, comic strip that you read or you're thinking about uh, the, the job you're doing at work or you're 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 thinking about what your sister is doing to you or what you know any any of that stuff it's all attractive and that can be not only hard to untangle it can also be pretty confusing when you're being a deliberate creator so this is an important topic to understand the difference between and uh, with that very confusing introduction i'm gonna let you describe what the difference is wendy because you're better at it than i am okay well so deliberate creation is where you choose something you want to see manifested. Versus default creation is where it, it either happens or it doesn't. Stuff just occurs. You're not thinking about anything. You're not visualizing something. In other words, nothing on purpose. Mm -hmm. 
because everything that's created in our life is created because of law of attraction, but some of it happens just kind of, it happens, and you don't know why it happens, because you didn't involve yourself on a purposeful level to make anything happen in a positive way or a negative way. And and another way to say it is you just let whatever was going on in your environment help to create whatever was going on. All right. Okay. So with that as an introduction, how how does living by default become a problem? Well, this is where the rest of my Sunday started to unravel in this new awareness about default versus deliberate living. Okay. Because... I recognized that much of my life occurred by default. Even the positive things, Mm -hmm. it was just kind of by default. There was no special timetable. It showed up whenever it showed up. Um, Knowing what I know about law of attraction today, I can look at some of the big things I created, such as how I got my house, and I can say, wow, I can really see law of attraction's hand in it. But at the same time, I go, it took me like a couple years to manifest a house, which is a really long time. Oh, yeah. And that's because I didn't know law of attraction back then. Now, remember, law of attraction is still operating 24-7, whether I know it or not or whether I believe in it or not. But how I manifested the house or thought that I can see how it started to escalate the process. So when I came up with this idea a couple weeks ago, I wanted to create something deliberately. That meant I was going to actively be a part of the process and monitoring it. Not monitoring from the perspective of I have to do something or tell law of attraction what to do, but purposely being aware and paying attention to what's occurring. And just take a moment to explain why you do that. What's the what's the purpose behind constantly paying attention? Because we've all heard you know, about situations where people did pay attention to what it is, not only it's occurring, but they keep revisiting what they asked for, and then they start to doubt about it, and then they start working against themselves, and before they know it, nothing's showing up. So what's the difference between that and what you're talking about? So I'm going to answer that by explaining something first, that what I got on Sunday was I kind of got a loving tap on the wrist that said, Wendy, you've spent the majority of your life being a default creator. It's time to step up your game. And I went, I really have been a default creator? And I started thinking about thinking about law of attraction, how I teach law of attraction, how we do this podcast on law of attraction. I'm like, law of attraction is like on my brain 24-7. And I'm like, how is it I've been a a default creator? Mm. And what I realized is because over time, the thing that I've done that I'm really pleased with in my life is that because I told myself I wanted to prioritize feeling good and feeling happy, I really have made a practice out of doing that. And in so doing, I have raised my... Uh, broadcast or my vibrational broadcast, what I feel most of the time is something really positive. And because I'm feeling positive most of the time, I'm in what Law of Attraction or Abraham Hicks would call the receiving mode, or I'm able to receive um, new input and new ideas, and and I receive the things that I'm wanting to to manifest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's where what was coming to me is, the illusion that it was deliberate and so many cool things so quickly well what I recognized I was doing that simply because I have practiced the art of feeling good most of the time so I'm in the space that allows good stuff to show up but that's different than being a deliberate creator where I uh, let me say it a different way when I'm, a default, when I'm a default creator, I'm allowing just the natural circumstances of life to create whatever gets created. And for me, because I'm in this positive space most of the time, it means that I create good stuff most of the time. Okay. 
but it's not because I've decided I'm going to create this ABC project or ABC thing that I really want. I just, I, it's kind of like I haven't asked for anything in a long, long time. Ah, so unlike many people who are trying to practice LOA, you were kind of gliding along in a sort of a content mode. Yeah, just, you know, because good things come my way on a regular basis. So I wasn't really activating my muscles for being a deliberate creator. I mean, I will say that when it comes to feeling, if I feel bad, I know I don't like that. So I've, I have gained a practice, I've taught myself a practice of how to flip the switch so I can feel good pretty quickly. I have all sorts of strategies that allow me to do that. But it's like the thing I've been focusing on for a long time is just feel good. There's now, an important takeaway here. I'm not saying there's here. anything wrong with that. That's a good no, thing. No, there, there's an important takeaway, though, that I want to make sure we touch on. And that is most people, including myself, when we first become exposed to the law of attraction and we decide we want to start doing some creating with it, we are in the mode of let's create. Let's just create, create, create and attract, attract, attract. We don't normally start off by saying, well, I got to get myself into that positive frame of mind first. Whereas you kind of reversed the formula for a bit there. You said, I just want to be in a positive frame of mind all day long, and if I do that, I know good things are going to happen regardless of whether I'm deliberately trying to create it. And that's actually what you've been ending up with. You've been ending up with a whole lot of stuff coming through to you, a lot of events, a lot of experiences, um, job situations, you know, and incomes and, and you know, relationships and everything else, all coming to you kind of by default simply because you put yourself into a good place and you stayed there. That's not a strategy we hear a lot about. So I want you to just touch on that before we get into the deliberate creation part because that's kind of unusual. Well, I, I will add to when you said, you know, when many people come into Law of Attraction, the first thing they do is they want to be deliberate about it and they want to create something new. Well, when I came into Law of Attraction, <clears throat> I wanted to take the biggest, baddest things that I was so dissatisfied with in my life and wanted to change them. Mm. And I found that I was not getting much traction doing that. So I kind of was having a hard time with being a deliberate creator because if I wanted more money, more money wasn't coming. Right. If I wanted a, a job that was more satisfying, that wasn't coming. Right. If I wanted a body that was thinner and trimmer and whatever, it wasn't coming. Mm -hmm. If I wanted a relationship that really felt just juicy-goosey, I, I love it and, and there's great intimacy – it wasn't coming. So I wasn't getting the results that I thought this whole idea of deliberate creation was supposed to bring to me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. instead of just giving up, because I'm not a giver-upper. <laughs> <laughs> that much we know. Um, <laughs> so since I'm not a quitter, I kept listening and studying Law of Attraction with the sense of there's got to be something in there I can take away from it that will help me in these situations as to why the things I'm wanting to deliberately create in my life aren't happening. And that's when I, I kind of stumbled into, well, I got a ton of resistance on the trail of all four of those subjects I just talked about. I wanted them really bad. It hasn't happened. I've been frustrated, angry, beating my head against the wall trying to make those things happen. And so I was resist. I, I, I just had lots of resistance yeah, in we, all four areas. Yeah, we know that's not a good place to be in because that explains very clearly why not the, the job, the relationship, the health, everything was not showing up the way you expected it to. You were absolutely exactly. in the worst place to be for that. So when I heard Abraham talking about set um, happiness as your priority, now when I first heard that, I was still beating my head against a rock trying to make all these other things <laughs> deliberately be created but it wasn't working right and i thought the idea of setting happiness as a priority was stupid <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> frankly it just seemed really inane to me like what does happiness have to do with any of these things that i want um but you know i kept hearing it kept hearing it and finally i kind of surrendered to the idea and i went all right well what do i have to lose if i make it a priority and i really spend some time just really focusing on and I went, all right, well, maybe 
the worst thing that will happen is I'll feel good. I'm like, well, that seems pretty okay to me. So let's just go there. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good good way of justifying it. I like that. <laughs> so I spent a, a good good amount of time. You know, I still wanted those other things, but every time I felt the internal frustration, I go, oh, let go of that because if you're in a state of frustration, you're creating resistance. If you're creating resistance, you're f- adding fuel to the wrong fire of getting more of what you don't want. So this is a good place to try to figure out how do I pivot myself in the direction of feeling good. And so that's where I said I've developed a bunch of strategies to feel good, but it started working. And I did start to feel happy. And here's what's kind of interesting about the whole process. I started feeling so good that when I think about one of those other things I really wanted in my life, I would just kind of go, you know, it'll come when it comes. I'm not going to put any focus or attention on it because I know that when I did, it it was pr- um, prohibiting me from moving forward towards it. So I'm just going to let go of all the good stuff that I want. So you really, knowing, you, you really took a, undertook a, a complete let go strategy. You didn't just let go of one thing. You let go of everything. Everything. And I went, you know what? It's not my job to orchestrate how those things come. I have complete awareness and understanding and faith and trust that the universe knows what I want. I don't have to ask for it ever again. The universe knows what I want. My only job is to get the heck out of the way because I'm the one who has kept myself from receiving the things that are important to me because I kept focusing on them from a negative space instead of a positive space. That's a good Even piece. though sometimes I thought it was positive, but the feeling underneath it was, why is it not here yet? Why is it not here yet? Why is it not here yet? That, that's a good piece to remember for anybody who finds themselves in the space where, and we've all done this, where you request something, it hasn't shown up yet, so you request it again because it needs more energy. So it hasn't shown up yet, so you request it again because it needs more energy or so we think. Not realizing that what we're actually doing is, is resisting each time because we're saying, well, I didn't really believe it the last time, but I believe it this time. <laughs> I mean, that's perfectly said, Walt. That is exactly what I was doing, and that was something that it took me a long time to understand. And so... I recognized, you know, I want to get out of the asking zone. Right. You know, actually, for me, it was more like the begging and pleading zone. Yes, well, that too, yeah. I've done a lot of that. (laughs) Yeah. And so when I realized, oh, my gosh, you know, I've asked for these things for decades. And so the universe totally knows what I'm after. And so I didn't know how to let go of resistance in any other way except to just surrender to the knowing that the universe has my back and those things will all come to me when I stop focusing on the lack of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And strategically, I didn't do it purposely, but this is kind of like as I was learning new stuff, it's what happened. I started to focus on feeling good. I started making that my priority, feeling happy, feeling good, feeling positive. I have to say, That's too, I, I'm the really majority glad to hear of that. my time for a long time. I'm glad to hear that story because that's the track I put myself on. And while I haven't advanced quite as far as you have, what you basically have done by laying it out that way is say in a, indirectly, hey, Walt, you're on the right track. And I'm thinking, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Because I do get results. Well, I mean, it's not like I haven't been getting some positive results. I have been. But I just haven't been up into the, the positive realm that I wanted to stay in all the time. I'm not quite there yet. I'm really close, but I'm not quite there yet. So it's like, oh, good. I have something good to look forward to. This is exciting. <laughs> well, and so I'm finding great benefit. I, I can say this now. I couldn't have said this a couple years ago because it was still frustrating then. But I I now see great benefit in my life's experience of letting go of the things that really were important to me, knowing eventually they will come when I get out of the way, and focusing on feeling good and feeling happy. And as I've done that, things really have started to just occur. Mm. And I've been going with the flow. I get a piece of information, I follow up on it. It's really good. And it's like I've been feeling really good, like, wow, I'm seeing I am manifesting things really well. And I 
don't always know exactly what I was thinking of at the time or what produced it, except to say this. I had gotten out of the way. I was no longer an, um, a lackful creator. I wasn't creating the lack of things anymore, and it gave space for that positive thing to flow in. Now, of those big four areas of my life, they haven't all been um, manifested in fullness, but I do see evidence in each one of those four areas of things moving in a better direction. And the biggest thing I can say that I recognize in terms of evidence is when I think about each one of those, I no longer have a negative feeling. Well, that's good. That's good I right feel there. very hopeful. Like, I have a knowing it's on its way. Okay. Like, I know that, that the man who is just the right guy for me I know that he's either in the prep stage like I am, but we will make our way to each other at some point. In, like yesterday, it's going to happen so soon. That's how it feels to me. But like when I think about having a new relationship in my life, it feels really good. Oh, that's good. And I know some of the steps along the way have been, I, you know, after my divorce, I really loved my house by myself. And I kind of noticed that I took up all the space where my ex-husband used to be. I, I have filled all the drawers. I have refilled. I have shifted things around in the closet. So instead of a sharing closet, it's all mine. Mm -hmm. And one day it came to me, have you made space in your <laughs> life? I was just going to say. And I went, oh, <laughs> no. And, and it's not like I felt the need to do anything in that moment, but there was a day, and it was probably about a year ago, there was a day that all of a sudden I just like, went through my whole house and decluttered and moved things around. And at the end of it, I went, oh, my gosh, I have just made space for him in the closet. Because, I, I, I mean, talk about a goodwill day. I had tons of stuff going to the goodwill, tons <laughs> of stuff going to trash, tons of stuff to give away. But it's like I have room in the drawers. I have room in the closet. I have room all over. And I'm like, mm -hmm. huh, I've made a space for him. So when I think about someone in my life, it feels inviting to me now where for a while I'm like, I don't know if I want anybody in my space. I'm really kind of liking my freedom. But and, that feeling has changed. So anyway, that's just one of the areas and one of the evidences. And by the way, it's not like you're going purely on feelings here, too, because you've also had concrete evidences in, in certain areas of your, of your life, stuff that's shown up in a big way. I mean, I know career, for instance, your career has basically exploded along the lines that you you had in mind up until this point. So in that area, for instance, you've been very successful. Absolutely. And and it, so my idea is right now, all of those big four areas that I used to just feel a sense of like Ugh, depression and is it ever going to happen? Yeah, right. I don't have those feelings at all because they have shifted so dramatically. And I know that a good part of that is because I've been focused – on being happy. And so whenever one of those areas pop up in my life as how come it's not here yet, I immediately turn to, ah, but it's on its way. Many things in my life I once wanted that I now have, and this is no different. Law of attraction knows me. Law of attraction <laughs> understands everything I want. Law of attraction has my back. I am well cared for. And these are the little rampages that I go on when a negative thought comes in of lack. Mm -hmm. So like I turn it around right away because that's what I've been practicing. Right. And it's got to be a nice so, feeling, too. I mean, the fact that you've been doing this so rigorously for the last few years means that most of the time you are in a good feeling place. And when you're in that good, good feeling place, that means you're not feeling all the negativity about, oh, the stuff hasn't shown up and so forth. And that alone has to feel good. That has to be like, oh, what a relief. I don't have to put up with those thoughts anymore. It feels awesome. Awesome. So... Now I'm going to finally go back to your question. Which yeah. is oh, did I ask a question between. here? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I have a long-winded answer, but nonetheless, hopefully I was laying a foundation for it. Um, so The first half hour of what Wendy's question has been sponsored by. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, let me jump back in Sorry, here. I, I just couldn't resist. Um, <laughs> that's okay. That was totally funny. Um so where I've been for maybe the last couple years, because I've been focused on feeling good and feeling happy, in a way, yes, that is a manifestation. Yes, I have been creating it. 
um, so basically, I've put myself in this place of just surrendering to knowing that the law of attraction knows everything that I want. Have to like ask anymore? Okay. And actually, stopping the asking was a big deal to me, but I I, I hardly ever ask anymore. But this it caused cool. me to recognize I hardly ever ask anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was the big reveal. <laughs> See, that was the big reveal, and that's where I went. Hey, I want to get. I want to like get back in the game. Mm-hmm. I want to play the game of deliberate creating because that's where life is really juicy and fun and exciting and explosive in a good way. And so I'm stretching my muscles now, and whereas before when I created. It was using a sense of will, and I'm going to push through this thing. But that's when I was creating a lot of stuff by pushing through resistance. Well, now I have such an awareness that life can have such a beautiful flow to it, and things can come with ease. I really want to learn how to create from ease with with deliberate intent, because this is something I haven't done a whole lot of. I I know how to be persevering and push through resistance because abraham does say with enough intensity you can push through your resistance but it doesn't always feel good while you're doing it Mm -hmm. and as the story that i've written for our book will will express (laughs) i mean i had a lot of downs a lot of ups it was a roller coaster it was oh my goodness you know but that was before i knew law of attraction so now i'm like hey if i teach this stuff i probably ought to model it in a way that like people can see how it can be utilized in a really cool fashion. So that's where I got the idea. I wanted to put something out there as a target that I want to shoot for that will be deliberate. And here's an insight that I got the other day. When I put the target goal date for June, the end of June, and that, then it got moved up to April 1st, the awareness that came to me was that when I set it for June, it was because I set it out of fear. Ah. I didn't think I could create that quickly, something as big as what I want to create. Which goes and, to prove that it doesn't matter if we've been practicing this stuff forever, seemingly, and we've gotten really good at it. We all continue to have moments where we just let stuff slip through and we have to catch it and like, oh, we got to do something with that. It's not like we achieve perfection in our thought process. So the fact that I received the April 1st, I received that information. I went, okay, then the the law of attraction knows that this can be manifest by April 1st. And my questions have been, what can I do to be a part of this? What can I do to purposely, deliberately be a part of this? I don't want to create by default anymore. I don't want to just set a target and go, I hope it shows up one day and that all the planets align, you know, purposely for me. It's like, what can I do to be a part of this? And what's been coming to me is just keep asking for the next step and be willing to follow it. Hmm. And so even though I did get agitated on Sunday, I believe that that was a necessary part of my process because it was so agitating. And remember, I don't like to feel bad. Right. Because feeling good is a priority for me. Yeah. So in that not feeling good moment, I'm like, what can I do to feel good? And I went, I need some evidence because if I can focus on something positive, it'll shift me. And so I got something positive, which is, oh, we're moving up the target date from the end of June to April 1st. And I'm like, okay, that feels good. (laughs) And then I spent time focusing on that, and I noticed how good it felt. Mm. So that, like, was uh, ticking all the boxes. One, it feels good. Two, I'm prioritizing happiness because that feels good. (laughs) Three, I'm focusing on the thing that I'm wanting to create by putting my efforts of thought of how exciting it'll be that it's manifest by April 1st, so I know that's part of creating it. And it's like it just keeps getting more exciting and more exciting. And then when I got kind of the slap on the wrist that I'd been a sloppy thinker, I'd been a default thinker, it's really exciting to go, I'm going to start learning a true deliberate creation where I want to be a part of this like all the time. Now i got a question for you. Because on the one hand, you were talking very clearly here about how you have been a default creator. You wanted to be more of a deliberate creator. And indeed, how you were even paying attention to the impulses that you were getting and following the impulses and and so forth. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, most recently, the messages coming through your 
your your internal impulses were basically saying don't do anything. So I'm wondering, this, yeah. is this the same voice that's saying don't do anything but be, be a deliberate creator at the same time? <laughs> I don't quite understand that part. That's because when I was hearing don't do anything, I knew what that meant. And how that was interpreted to me was don't take any specific physical actions, don't Google, don't research, don't make phone calls, just bask in the feelings that you've been given thus far. Oh, okay. And so like the April 1st thing, it's like I spent the whole day Sunday, and we're up to what? Where are we in the week? Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I've been focused on April 1st. This new thing is coming into my world April 1st. And in every way I can, I'm lining up for it because I'm feeling it. I'm broadcasting the signal of how excited I am that I'm manifesting something deliberately and it's going to come by April 1st. Why do I know April 1st? Because the messages from the universe that were gifted to me was April 1st. I didn't make that up. So it's not even an arbitrary date like, because the end of June was arbitrary based on my fears. But it's like, I was given April 1st. Now, can you hear how excited I am about this? Not not only do I hear it, it's a key point, isn't it? Because you're continuing to focus on this thing that you're hoping will manifest, which can often get us into trouble when we do that because we start, start to doubt. But you're actually experiencing the opposite. You're experiencing excitement, and it's not an excitement you're, you're trying to talk yourself into. it. You're actually really feeling it. I'm feeling it. And... I mean, yes, and I, I don't talk myself into it, but I do allow myself to talk about it so that it is more exciting and more exciting. Because the more I talk about it, the more the law of attraction actually provides to me more things that are exciting about it. Yeah, that's an so important I am distinction, fueling, though. I'm fueling my, my project. I'm right. fueling this. That, that's a really important distinction, though, because I think a lot of people – they, you, you can see it in the way they communicate in social media about you know, what they're currently trying to attract. They, they make it a point to say how excited they are and so forth. And then you get into the comments section and you find out they're really not all that excited after all. They're trying to convince themselves that they're excited. But they don't, it, it's often hard to see the difference when you're doing it yourself. It's hard to notice the difference between I'm trying to be excited and I really am excited. And I'm not even sure if there's a way to delineate, but how, how would you differentiate between the two? Like trying to make yourself feel excited and you're just, wow, I'm just excited, period. Well, because if I'm trying to make my feel, myself feel excited, I don't feel excited. I feel an efforting factor. Yes, the effort. I feel like the pushing uphill right. phenomenon. Yes. But when I feel excited, oh my, there's a lightness in it. Mm. There's a joyfulness in it. There's a playfulness. There's a happiness. I have a smile on my face while I'm talking right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have such a sense of joy. And so, like, your question about action, it sounded as though I was creating some contradiction. Mm-hmm. This is the action that I was meant to take. This is what I was being guided. Like, when I hear, just milk it, just bask in it, just enjoy the, the guidance you've been given so far, what I'm doing right now is that. But... When I think of what's an action to take, that's where I'm physically going. It's not just something I'm doing with my thoughts and my emotions. It's where I physically go and I do some research or I go buy something or, you know, like if I'm starting a new business, you know, you design your business cards, you design your website, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not, or you go to the Better Business Bureau and try to get a loan. Those to me are all actions, mm-hmm. and I've not been guided to take an action like that. Isn't it interesting, though? I've only decided to milk what I'm getting thus far. Isn't it interesting, though, that uh, the so-called, quote, action, unquote, that you took was really just to celebrate, to get excited, to feel good, like, yay, this is happening, and turn it into a big celebration, which is something that I've been talking about with, with Cindy and with Tom a lot, too, which is how little we actually celebrate the good things that happen. I mean, I was noticing that last week. There was one particular day where I had like, oh, I had a whole bunch of good emails about the book and I was getting all this good input. And in each case, it was like, good, uh uh-huh, good, uh uh-huh, good, uh uh-huh. No celebration, none whatsoever. (laughs) You were just ticking the boxes. It was like I was missing opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to go, (laughs) woo-hoo! 
what a difference that day. I mean, it was a good day, don't get me wrong, but that day could have been a spectacular day if I just stopped and said, wait a minute, let's celebrate. Let's get up and do a happy dance. Get my energy going. Get the, get the, the thrill of it just flowing through me. Because if I had done that, I mean, as good as the day had been, I'll bet you it would have been 10 times better. Probably. You know? Probably. And, you know, yesterday after the show, you and I were talking, and um, it felt in a way like kind of out of the blue. You were just talking to me because I have, you know, multiple websites and whatever, and you were just kind of throwing oh, right. things out there. Yeah. About, yeah. oh, and, and, you know, if you get a web developer or designer, you want to do this, and you want to think about that. And I, at the moment, you know, we were having that conversation. I just thought, oh, well, this is just all good info. And so, yeah, I'm, you know, putting it on my mental shelf, like, hey, when I'm doing this, these are things to look for. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't realize till we had really gotten deeper into the conversation, when you were talking about how to, like, create an avatar for who is your perfect or ideal client, I was struggling with that because, you know, first of all, I've, I've been schooled in that thought process multiple times. And I always felt I had a roadblock and I couldn't get beyond a certain point. But I blew right past the roadblock last night when you and I were talking. And I don't know if you how much you were aware of it, but mm -hmm. like it lit up my life because when I got off the phone, I went, I got it. I finally got it. <laughs> That's great. And here's, here's the very cool thing. So, you know, here we are creating, we're collaborating to create a book for LOA Today. Right. And, you know, I've submitted one chapter. I'm about to submit another one. Mm -hmm. And both of those chapters in the writing of them have so inspired me and almost like played back to me, here's what you do, Wendy. Here is your strategy for how you create, which, interestingly, I didn't really see it that clearly until I was writing my stories. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, you have given me tons of accolades about what a good story writer I am. And you are. I think I'm a pretty good story writer. You are. But what I came to understand from our conversation last night is if you, like, just tell a story about who your ideal client is, it's like that will make the difference. It's like that's what you're wanting to do. You're exactly. wanting to just make this up. And I'm like... Oh, so instead of just answering the questions, you know, what are the demographics? How old is your client? What do they do for a living? What movie? What movies do they like to watch? Do they have pets? Do they have children? That was really dry for me, and I just couldn't see how that was relevant. Mm -hmm. In the way that when you and I were talking, I was telling you about a client that I had, and you went, yeah, what you just did, all those things you said. You put in, you, you created a wonderful story. And for me, the word story is what was important because, and here's how I'm going to take it from the, okay, here's the business thing and, you know, finding my niche market kind of thing to I'm going to take it back to this, this new project that I'm working on in my life. I'm going to, I am starting to tell myself stories about what it's going to look like when it's done. I'm just going to tell a story. It's like I'm making it up. And it doesn't matter. I'm just going to tell the story because what I realized is if in telling the story of what I'd like to see, it engages all my senses. Mm -hmm. Like April 1st is so exciting to me. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I can do this. I can tell a story that is really juicy and exciting and engages my feelings so that I can broadcast what the essence of what makes me happy. It's very cool. And I have to tell you, Walt, for years, the ability to do that has defied me. <laughs> like even in law of attraction circles, I've heard people say, I've even heard Abraham say a million times, you know, like just talk about it or rampage about it in a way that feels really good to you. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. You know? I think we like all experience it, it that. Happens it happens or it doesn't, but I didn't know how to do it on purpose. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I ran into that, too. I'm actually a pretty good writer of stories as well, and I ran into it. I didn't know how to begin to tell a story like that. And uh, for people who had not heard the word avatar before, that's just a device that you use when you're trying to market something. You're trying to create an idealized customer, and the avatar is like the representation of that idealized customer. So that's what that part's all about. But you're, telling, you're trying to tell a story to that avatar, to that idealized customer, to that perfect customer. 
and, and the story has to be something that's that's relevant to them, but also relevant to whatever it is you're marketing. Well, that concept of telling a story is just as difficult or just as easy, depending on how you look at it, and just as relevant as it is in telling the story about what it is you want, not what reality is, but what you want reality to be, what you want to turn it into. That's, that's what we're trying to do as deliberate creators. We're trying to change our perspective, to change our, our, our way of looking at reality and say, nope, the way reality is is not way, the way I'm going to see it. I'm going to start seeing it in this new way. I'm going to tell a new story. And that's where we all get blocked. Like, tell a new story. But but, but that's not what happened. But but I don't know how to tell a story. But, I, I mean, how do I make something about myself? I mean, I am what I am. This is me. I mean, that's just what I am. And we get all frenetic about it. I did it, too. And I know how to write a story, Wendy. That's what gets me. I know how to write a story. And I was still stuck. Like, what the heck was wrong with me? <laughs> well, like, as an example... Let's say somebody's looking for a new job. Let's say in their current job they're really not feeling satisfied and they've done it for a long time and they're wanting, for, wanting something new. Now, in the past, and I've been in that position, in the past, if I were to have just come out of an Abraham seminar, I'm like, okay, so let's just focus on what it is I want in my new job. Yeah, right. Here's how, all I, right. Would have do- Here's how I would have done it ineffectively. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, I want something new because... I'm tired of what I've had. I, I like variety. So having a new job would be filled with variety because it would be something new and I'd have to learn something new. I'd like to be around people that are friendly and that I like and that we have things in common. Um, I love work at home jobs. But can you hear as, as I'm talking? Oh, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's how I've done this for a long time. No wonder I wasn't manifesting the things that really meant something to me. I mean, even your, your voice that's, sounded bored. I was even, making a list. Well, not, not only that, your voice, I mean, the, the way you said it sounded bored. You certainly didn't sound excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, because the thought of, like, getting a new job is like, oh, my God, what an ordeal, you know? Yeah, right. And I have to go through interviews. And even though I'm pretty darn good at interviews, it's like, oh, I need to, like, revamp my resume. Oh, I hate writing resumes, but okay, I'll spend time <laughs> doing that. And it's like there's just nothing about it that was exciting. Well, no wonder the law of attraction was keeping me in a stuck job. Yeah. I mean, no wonder. So, now, I've never done this before. I'm going to do it on the fly. But knowing what I've now learned about tell a story, a okay. good, fun story, here's how, here's how I think I would do this differently. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do for my career, notice it just moved from a job to a career. That yep. sounded better to That's me. That's good. So what I want to do for a career is something where every morning when my alarm goes off, or maybe I even wake up before my alarm because I'm so excited, Ooh. that I am just filled with a sense of I can't wait to get there because this is so fun to me. And my job is not my work. My job is what I do for play. And this is what I would do whether I got paid or not because I enjoy it so much. And when, let's say I start to engage, so now I'm like jumping to the next scene. So I'm sitting behind my computer and I'm creating an email and I'm a wordsmith. I love to play with words and I'd love to have a job where I get to send really creative emails that really target the people that I'm wanting to talk to in a way that they really understand and it excites them so much that they can't wait to call me as a response to talk more about what I shared in the email. And then when they're calling me, I'm getting to engage with them personally and we're getting to share stories. And who knows, maybe they have something going on in their life that they want to change and they're open to what I have to share. And, you know, I'm a teacher of law of attraction and they're open to that. And they start saying the word metaphysical. I'm like, really? You know the word metaphysical? (laughs) Oh, my gosh, that's so exciting because I'm very metaphysical. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I took this Tony Robbins course. You took a Tony Robbins course? So did I. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did a fire. So did I. I've done it four times. Okay. Now, I could go on and on because I really could. But that feels so much better to me than my, okay, what are all the, what's the criteria that I want for a new job? Oh, yeah. And I, I just told a story, and I don't know, I might, might have spent two minutes on it, but, like, I know that what I, just now, literally, not just, yes, I was doing it as an example, but the law of attraction doesn't know I'm telling a story for the 
sake of giving an example, or I really want it. So I just know that I have broadcasted all those juicy, goosey, fun things into where I am right now in my current job and or in the career I'm creating. Yeah, I, I was going to say you better be careful and, and kind of pay attention because I think you're going to get a, an email or a phone call very soon from somebody who previously had been to Tony Robbins seminars and <laughs> who was into metaphysics and all this other stuff. And that's okay because I was telling truth. I was, I was saying this is what is fun for me is when you make a connection with somebody and you find out you have a ton of stuff in common and that you could find a way to collaborate on all sorts of projects in the future. Oh, my gosh, there's nothing more exciting to me than that. So bring it on, universe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. This is good. <laughs> I mean, as I've been focusing a little bit more this way, I've been really intrigued in the last couple of days. I've gotten more LinkedIn requests where people have said, hey, like we have some things in common i hope you'll accept my connection that's okay i've been getting a lot of them where they're saying that to me Mm -hmm. but in the past i'd get maybe one or two a week you know and nobody said anything they just sent the generic hey will you connect with me responding in a different way and i'm like "Ooh, i have i guess i've upped something when it comes to how i want to connect with people because it's Showing up. Mm-hmm. Sure. And it's gone. And, and so, sometimes, sometimes it's hard to even connect. You no, know, put the connections together. Like, okay, here's a result. Now, where did I initiate that? Exactly. <laughs> Half the time you can't figure it out. You know, you're like, you know, you did, but you yeah, can't quite place it. It's got to be someplace back there. <laughs> so where I am today with my new project that I'm setting out there, that I am now a deliberate creator. Um, is, you know, I said I had committed to every day when I wake up in the morning to focus on it. And some days I wake up in the morning and it's like so ready for me to focus on. Like I just feel this like, oh yeah, jump in, jump in. And I've gotten some new ideas, um, new possibilities, things I would have never even considered or thought of before. Um, And I know that every time a new idea that I'd never considered before pops in, hello people, that's called a manifestation. That's part of how creation takes place. We, we often all don't think free. about that. We often think that manifestations all, are physical things that show up, right? But they don't have to be. You can, you can manifest thoughts, too, and they're just as, as legitimate as manifested creations. We forget about that. Yeah, and I used to discount thoughts until I heard Abraham the other day say, um, it was kind of like a wake-up to everyone in the room, like, do you not realize the level of thought that went into the planet that you are now living on. Oh, God. <laughs> there was a lot of thought that was thought about before it happened. And I'm like, huh, that's pretty cool. So when I get April 1st, I celebrate. That's, that's part of the creative process. When I get other new ideas, it's part of the creative process. You know, when I get a sense to make a phone call and I get new information, that's part of the creative process. But I'm not necessarily taking action to make anything happen. I'll do that if and when I get the guidance to do so. So as we've been as we've been talking about deliberate creation here, I want to. I'm sorry, I didn't mean mean to take you off that, but I want to get back to the the point of deliberate creation because that that is the topic: deliberate creation versus living by default. And where deliberate creation is concerned, it sounds to me like we have come to a very definitive conclusion or maybe a couple of conclusions conclusion number one you want to be in a happy place all the time or as close to all the time as you can be and number two you don't necessarily want to be controlling what's happening instead you want to be both putting out there and receiving the receiving is actually in many ways more important than the putting out there absolutely which means learning how to receive it and learning even to recognize that there's something there to receive You only have to ask once. And in the process, receiving happens multiple times before the creation happens. Boy, I can't remember the last time I heard that thought. The receiving happens multiple times during the creation process. That's really something. I mean, I've received lots of information, lots of nuances, lots of guidance. So I've been receiving many pieces toward my creation. But I only asked for it once. Mm-hmm. 
Funny thing, too, um, when you came on board, which was uh, late November of last year, and shortly after that, we, we'd started to do the podcast in the afternoon together. And somewhere in there, you mentioned how you were part of this book that uh, was a multi-author book. And then uh, you were telling the excited story about how it rose to number one on a number of different uh, levels on Amazon and so forth. And I realized that was a really cool process. That led me to want to do a book like that for our group, for our, for our podcast and for the co-hosts and, and to actually bring in more coaches and so forth. And you know what? I didn't really think about it in terms of trying to manifest something. I just thought that would be fun to do. Let's just, let, let's, let's do this. this. This is a great thing. It's a wonderful marketing idea, I thought. I thought this is something that would really, really work. Let's just do it. I had no real thought about manifesting it at all. But as we got into it, and I'm kind of, I have to admit, I was kind of moving along because I wanted this thing to go like, okay, let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> so I started going and going on it. And a couple of you guys were like, whoa, we're going really fast here. And we're a little worried about it. But then we started getting interest out of it. And, and the interest was coming fast and furiously. And then you guys are writing these articles, these, these stories rather. And these stories are marvelous stories. And it's like, it's all piling in. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, wow, I was manifesting kind of by default but kind of deliberately there was a little bit of both there because there was no intention directly of manifesting but there was an intention of just doing a book and so i wondered could you just talk about that for a second is how do we it, it, does it make sense to dif differentiate on something like that or do we just not worry about it and say go with it uh kind of that okay. if, if it's feeling good to you while you're doing it then keep doing it okay well, you know, I have no intention of stopping. <laughs> you, 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 you have this exciting idea to put together a book proposal, and you're like, hey, guys, hey, co-hosts, I'm going to send this out to you. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to go find some other coaches to join us. You didn't really have I've, – I've been listening to your process now. You really didn't have any resistance on the trail. Oh, no. You just had all-go all moments. Yeah. And you may not have been aware – that you were getting the insight or the impulse to take the next step, but I believe you were. I think so, and too. And that's why it's been moving so smoothly with yeah. no effort, with, with a sense of ease. Those are the hallmark signs of being a deliberate creator, even if you didn't know you were. <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to work. Which is reassuring because, be because that means... You don't really actually have to say, okay, today I'm going to be a deliberate creator. You don't have to be that deliberate no. about it. No. You just go for I mean, like 150 years ago, nobody ever heard of Law of Attraction. <laughs> it's it's always been around, but no one talked about it. And we had some incredible things occur throughout history. Mm -hmm. So nobody walked around saying, I'm going to be a deliberate creator and create the Parthenon. <laughs> But yet it happened. It got built. Somebody had some incredible idea, and they moved forward. I believe many people in history have had impulses that have been inspired from divine energy. Um, it just we didn't have that languaging back then. And That's I'd right. say today we're in a very different place in who we are as a people. And the idea of wanting to do things deliberately, I think, is very much a part of who we are, mm -hmm. and it was it's probably an answer to our asking. Yeah, I think it probably like is. How do we do things on purpose? You know, sometimes I get great results in my life, but other places I don't, and I don't know how to make it happen in this this area of my life. Well, I do I know that's been asked. I do know one thing that I want to to manifest deliberately, and that is I want to get all of our listeners who haven't subscribed yet to subscribe to the podcast. So I just Good want to idea. take 30 seconds here and say, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast, here's how you do it. I know we talk about it a lot, but in case you missed it the first 500 times, here it is again. <laughs> All you do, you go well, to for LOA our new today. Listener <laughs> who right. today, this show is the first show they're ever listening to. And we get those. This is the message. They're, they're, Please they're, subscribe to our podcast. They, they show up every day, so this is definitely for the new listeners. Go to LOAToday.net. You'll find right there on the, on the homepage, you'll find the player so you can listen to the podcast live if you want to. Also, you'll find little buttons for subscribing. Works great on an iPhone. In fact, you can also do it on an iPhone by going to the iTunes store and doing a search there for LOA Today, look under podcast, and boom, there we are. You can subscribe there as well. So 
iPhones make it really easy. Android phones like uh, Motorola's and Samsung's and uh, uh, Nokia's and so forth, they don't make it quite as easy because there's no built-in podcast software. But never fear, there's a way around this. You just go to the Play Store, you download a podcast app of some kind. Podcast Manager is a nice free one to use. You can use that one. Download that, use that app to do the search for LOA Today, and you'll find us there. So please, subscribe, because you're going to love it, and you're going to be able to keep up with it all. And Wendy, for somebody who needs the uh, personal touch, you're the person to talk to. How do they reach you? WendyDillard.com. You'll find my email address. You'll find my phone number. Call me up. Let's have a chat and see what we can do together. Perfect. Well, we didn't have a cliffhanger today, but this has been a good show. Thanks a lot. Let's, Let's do it again tomorrow. What do you think? You got it. I am going to be here. I will as well. We hope you are as well here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.